I started transitioning later in life at 52, so I never actually believed that this day would ever come. Um, so to walk into a place that has all the answers, that's able to help you, is tremendous. Before I had started going to Quest, I had a really hard time picturing what my life would look like in the future because I, I felt stuck. But to come here and then hear, yes, you can go on hormone blockers and eventually testosterone sooner than in a decade from now, it was really nice and I feel like I can finally start to see more what my future would look like. It's more than just putting up a rainbow sticker on the door. We get it. We understand if you've come here that you already know and that you're going to be well received and, what, and be the author of what you want to see for your own life. I think it starts, you know, at the board level, then the leadership and then the people who work here. And when all, you know, those aspects are working together, you can make some pretty impressive changes. We were fortunate in the fact that we had LGBTQ individuals on our board of directors from day one. And I think we were one of the first CHCs that actually had that as one of our priority populations. It was your voice that really put that on as part of the agenda, because there are a lot of populations that are underserved. Access to primary health care was a challenge for them in terms of providers actually understanding their needs, and so we were here to help address that and to fill that gap. I mean, there's a huge barrier for people accessing, like, you know, culturally sensitive primary care. And I will say particularly the trans community, you know, often deal with a lot of discrimination. As we sort of differed from the traditional model of transgender care, which was a very pathologizing model. It was sort of a mental health model where you had to prove you weren't, uh, so to speak, crazy first before people would even consider allowing you to engage in transition. Whereas we, you know, really started with a patient-centered uh, informed consent model right from the very beginning which has essentially become the standard of care for trans care, you know, around the world. They identify somewhere along that... The paradigm spectrum. shift we're seeing is that it's taken Providers away from the mental health uh, side and being put into the, you know, primary care side. And that's really the, the thing that we're trying to drive. And we can consider starting... Uh, we have a very good family doctor. We're very fortunate. He doesn't really have a lot of experience in dealing with trans care. And just having that, that option and having that, those services here to be able to know that Cal will be properly taken care of and that we, we can access that care and those services is when needed and still work with our family physician as well. Individuals can transfer care here so they will take care of their full health care or else for trans population we'll also share care or we can consult. We do that now across Ontario. So I was very lucky because I also had Dr. Masarola here that she's the lead of like LGBTQ care and also trans care. So I got mentored by her because I mean there is really no formal training or program that teaches you that at college or university to actually provide culturally competent care to this particular population. Well, I actually have this as my local practice. So being able to deal with the same doctors and nurses to look after me for everything is tremendous. One of the advantages of working at a CHC is that the whole purpose of being here is, is to, you know, help uh, populations that have access, difficulty accessing healthcare, which of course makes sense with the transgender population. Plus we can offer multiple services, including therapy, um, social work, uh, things like around housing, um, employment. Some people come here just accessing or wanting to access trans health care, but then we're able to, you know, connect them to other resources, whether it's within Quest or outside of our agency too. It builds a healthy community and ensures that the health of the individual is, is also supported as well as, as building so social networks, which is also important. It's nice to see Cal come to group and be so excited about coming to group, uh, just to be in an environment where, where he can truly be himself and, and just feel at ease. It's such a nice feeling to see how happy he is. We all had this thing in common, this thing that we could talk about that we can't really talk about with our other schoolmates because they don't really understand what we're going through. And it can be kind of isolating. In a society that judges, this place doesn't. It, they welcome you with open arms, they listen, they help. Creating a safe space for people to uh, explore who they really are and to build that, that strength in those social networks to be able to live a full life. I've kind of integrated some of like my sister and some of her friends going to like the dances provided by Quest, like the Pride Prom and the Halloween dance as well. 
They love the Halloween dance. They said it was more fun than the straight one. So. <laughs> I think a lot of um, LGBTQ youth don't feel safe going to like the more traditional proms that are held at their schools. So um, this is like a safe space, and it's I think it's better than a traditional prom. <laughs> That didn't exist when I was a guy growing up in this town. And I think that's amazing. And it's not only uh, people who are uh, out, it's people that are allies. It's making a really welcoming space, and I'm convinced that creates a healthier future. Not only for those kids, but for the entire community. When people get to live and fully as to who they're meant to be. I also go into the community to provide those community presentations to whether it's social service agencies or a hospital or, um, you know, to providers right. who are providing care to clients. It's a lot easier for me to go into community as opposed to people coming to Quest. The ultimate goal is that good, standard, effective care is offered across Ontario and there's no wrong door. Growing up gay, particularly in the era and generation I was born in, it was really a fight for human rights. Later on, it became a fight for survival because of the impact of HIV and AIDS and we became a new frontier. Now we look at the newer frontiers, like uh, trans health, trans rights. We need to be behind that as well. And at Quest, we fully are. Uh, that's one of the transformations I've seen that really has made a difference in a lot of lives, including mine. The number of people, trans population, who come through here, I think at one time, um, Colette said it was the third largest clinic in the country, which is amazing, in Little St. Catharines. So that has been really, really transformative. I don't know where I would be right now as a transgender person if Quest wasn't here. That's the impact they've had on my life.